the respiratory system. By the end of this lecture, you will learn the function and structure of the respiratory system. You will also learn the mechanism of breathing, how air is taken into the lungs and the pathway it travels to supply our tissues with oxygen. Then I will briefly discuss some disorders and infections of the upper and lower respiratory tract. The respiratory system's role in homeostasis is to make sure that oxygen enters the body and carbon dioxide leaves the body. Respiration, also known as ventilation and breathing, is a two-part process, inhalation or inspiration and exhalation or expiration. During inhalation, air moves from the atmosphere into the lungs, and during exhalation, air moves from the lungs out into the atmosphere. Earlier in the semester, you learned how the respiratory system is dependent on the cardiovascular system to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide throughout the body. Gas exchange occurs between the alveoli and the capillaries that surround them. The respiratory tract is divided into upper and lower sections. The respiratory tract consists of the nasal cavity, pharynx, glottis, and larynx. And the lower respiratory tract encompasses the trachea, bronchus, bronchioles, lungs, and the diaphragm. Air enters the nasal cavity, but as we know, air can also enter through the oral cavity. The hair inside the nasal cavity serves to filter the air as it enters the body. The nasal cavity is also lined with the mucous membrane that secretes mucus to trap debris and also moisten the air. The nasal cavity also functions to warm the air so it's not so cold when it reaches our lungs. Air then enters the pharynx, also known as the throat, which is a common pathway for food moving through the digestive system. There are tonsils located in the pharynx, which are part of the immune system. They contain a lot of white blood cells that can trap foreign substances and digest them by phagocytosis. In the respiratory system, the pharynx connects the nasal cavity to the larynx, where the vocal cords are located. You've also learned about the glottis, which is the opening into the air tube, also known as the trachea. This opening is in the center of the vocal cords. Let's take a closer look. In this figure, you can see the base of the tongue at the top and the epiglottis that covers the glottis or opening to prevent food from entering the trachea. On the left are the vocal cords of someone who is not making any sounds. But when sounds are made, the vocal cords vibrate to produce sounds as the air passes through. Click on the video to see how the vocal cords work. Again, the vocal cords are in the larynx, which is a passageway for air. And it is made of nine pieces of cartilage to protect and support the delicate tissue beneath. The thyroid cartilage is the uppermost and largest piece of cartilage that comes to a point that forms the Adam's apple. The larynx is also the last structure that makes up the upper respiratory tract. Air moves from the larynx to the trachea, also known as the windpipe. The trachea is made of 16 to 20 rings of cartilage that is held together by connective tissues. The cartilage prevents the trachea from collapsing during inhalation and exhalation. The rings of cartilage are C-shaped with the opening in the back as seen in the posterior view in the center of this figure. The esophagus sits just behind the trachea. The opening in the back of the tracheal cartilage allows the esophagus to expand as food passes through it. The trachea is also lined with ciliated epithelial cells and goblet cells. The goblet cells produce mucus 
that trap any debris that has made its way down to the lower respiratory tract and the hair-like cilia move to sweep the mucus and trap debris upward and out of the throat so that it doesn't move deeper into the lungs. Together, the ciliated epithelial cells and goblet cells make up the mucociliary escalator and serve to trap debris and move it upward and out of the body, just like an escalator. The trachea branches into a right primary bronchus and a left primary bronchus. These primary bronchi, plural for bronchus, further branch into secondary bronchi. There are three secondary bronchi on the right side and two on the left. This is because we have three lobes of lungs on the right side and two lobes on the left. It is the secondary bronchi that actually enter the lobes of the lungs. The secondary bronchi further branch into tertiary bronchi and they branch even further into bronchioles, the, the smallest air passages that lead to the alveoli, the small grape-like structures where gas exchange occurs. Here is a figure that shows one of the secondary bronchi entering one of the left lobes of the lung. You also see the smallest branch with the alveoli at the very end. As mentioned, the right lung has three lobes and the left lung has two lobes with an indentation to make room for the heart. The alveoli in the lungs is the site of gas exchange. Each lung is made up of secondary and tertiary bronchi, smaller bronchioles, and alveoli. Each lung has about 300 million alveoli, each of them surrounded by blood capillaries for gas exchange. Respiration or breathing is a two-part process of inspiration and expiration. During inspiration, the rib cage moves up and out and the diaphragm moves downward to accommodate expansion of the lungs as they fill with air. During exhalation, the rib cage moves down and inward to its original position and the diaphragm moves back up to its original position. Lung function tests are performed to analyze the health of the lungs. Each of the parameters measured have normal ranges and if numbers are outside of range, it could indicate a respiratory disorder. Now that you've learned the structures that make up the upper and lower respiratory tract, we can discuss some problems that can occur within each section. Strep throat, tonsillitis, and laryngitis are all upper respiratory tract infections. Strep throat is caused by the Streptococcus pyogenes bacterium. This infection causes severe sore throat, high fever, and white patches on a red throat. White patches appear on the tonsils. Strep throat can be easily treated with antibiotics, but if left untreated, the bacteria can spread and cause more serious infections like scarlet fever. Tonsillitis is a general infection that can be caused by bacteria or viruses. The tonsils contain white blood cells that phagocytize bacteria and viruses. Sometimes they can get overwhelmed with these microbes and become infected. Tonsillitis can also be treated with antibiotics if it's caused by a bacterial infection. Laryngitis is an infection in the larynx that causes inflammation and leads to loss of the voice. The vocal cords become swollen and they don't vibrate like they normally do when air passes. Lower respiratory tract infections include bronchitis, which infects the primary and secondary bronchi, the largest air passageways. Pneumonia can be caused by bacteria, viruses, or fungi. fungi. It can affect all parts of the lower respiratory tract, but most importantly, mm -hmm. the alveoli can fill with thick fluid and decrease gas exchange. 
There are a number of other infections and disorders that cause trouble inhaling or exhaling. Restrictive disorders like sarcoidosis make it very difficult to inhale. So the lungs don't fully fill with the normal volume of air and the body receives less oxygen than normal. Obesity can also restrict the ability of the lungs to fully expand. Obstructive disorders are those that make it difficult to exhale the normal volume of air. These people have no problems inhaling, but because the lungs don't fully exhale, stale air can accumulate in the lungs that contains carbon dioxide. Obstructive disorders are those like emphysema, asthmas, chronic bronchitis. These disorders are known by a blanket term called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD. You can use this slide as you review the material presented in this lecture.